All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and add our menu uh, to our website. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to getbootstrap.com and let's go to components and let's go to navs and uh, let's find a nav bar. Okay, here's a good one. This is going to be mobile responsive and I have all kinds of stuff. So I'm just going to grab everything in here. Just copy that. And then I'm going to go back to our page here and in our views, uh, inside layouts, let's create a new file. We're going to call that uh, main menu.php. I'm going to paste uh, what we just copied from Bootstrap there. And then in our default PHP, let's go ahead right before the content of the body. Um, we're going to add um, we're going to include our main menu.php and then what I want to do is I'm going to add a div here and I'm going to give it a class of container fluid and then I'm going to also give it a style and I'm going to say um, min height calc 100% minus 125 pixels and then I'm gonna put the um, body inside of that All right, if I go back now and we refresh the page All right. we have this and if I uh, go ahead and minimize it uh, this is all working. It's just um, Bootstrap's uh, uh, mobile responsive menu. So we're going to make this our own. Uh, we're we're going to populate it through our menu, uh, our menu uh, ACL file that we created. Uh, this one. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we need to do quite a bit of stuff here. Um, so kind of where we want to start, I think, is we're going to go ahead and grab our menu. And so go to mainmenu.php. And at the top of this page, um, go ahead and open some PHP tags. This time we'll close them. And we're going to create a menu equals router get uh, uh, get menu and then you could pass in the name of the menu so this is so how we could do multiple menus okay and then um, for now let's work on that so we'll go back to our router uh, file and we're going to uh, go ahead and get that so let's scroll down here I'm gonna go past our This is going to be a public static function get menu and oops do not need All right. so there we go um, we're going to pass in the menu and let's go ahead and instantiate a menu array here we're going to set that equal to an empty array and then our menu file is going we're going to use our file get contents and we'll do root ds app which is where this thing lives ds menu dot json okay and then we will do our ACL. 
uh, it's going to equal JSON decode and you file true make that an associative array and then we're just going to go ahead and loop for each ACL as key value pair if is array value so if it's array we'll need to go through it if, it, if it's an array then this is how we're going to know that it's there is a drop down or there's multiple so we'll have to say sub we'll set up a sub menu here We'll say for each value as key value pair. We're going to use the lower, just a K and a V here instead of, so that we don't want to override those, overwrite those. And um, first thing we need to check is if it's separator. Um, if K is equal to separator and not empty sub then we're going to say um, sub k is equal to a blank string and then we're going to continue okay because we don't want to add um, we don't want to add this separator as a link uh, we don't want to continue to try to go down that path. Okay. Else if uh, final val is equal to self get link of the value. We're going to have to create that in a moment. We'll say sub k is equal to the final value. Okay, and let's see. So outside of this for each loop now, we're going to say if not empty sub then menu array key is equal to sub so if it's not an array so let's find the end of this okay if it's not an array then we'll just say if final val woo, is equal to self get link val then what we're going to do is we're going to add menu array key is equal to final val Okay, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to return menu array. All right, so that's a barrel of fish hooks. <laughs> so just go ahead and look uh, through this. Basically, what it's going to do is it's going to loop through our menu, and it's going to it it's going to every time it gets to the bottom of this uh, of each one of these, it's going to create a, a link, which we're going to do that next. Um, if not, it's just going to re keep returning this. Um, it's going to keep building an array basically from this. Um, but it's replacing the stuff with either separators or with links. Okay, so let's go ahead and build our, uh, our private static function um, get link. 
it's going to take the value. So basically, anytime we did this uh, get link here, um, we passed in the value, and the value was either, you know, uh, if it's a sub item, it's it's going to be there, or, or it's going to be if it wasn't an array, it's just going to be the value of this. So it's going to be this value. This is what's going to be passed in, basically this or this or this. Uh, not that. This. Yep. Okay, so we're going to turn that into an array. So it's pretty easy. We're going to, we need to check um, if it is an external link. Okay? And the way that we're going to do that is just, oops. We're going to use a regular expression. So if preg match built-in PHP function um, and we're going to say HTTP S and we'll make that optional if there's an S on there or not and then uh, two forward slashes so if if that is in the value uh, so if that's equal to one which is preg match returns a one uh, if, if it matches. Then we're just going to return the value. Okay, and the reason we're going to do that is because if it's an external link, it's already a link. Okay? Um, else, what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and build this. So, I uh, U array is going to equal an explode. And we're going to explode it by our directory separator. Alright? Um, and so then we can say controller name is going to equal uc words. We're going to make uppercase words u array zero, right? And then action name is going to be. We have to check if it's set. So if it's set, uh, u array one uh, then we'll just simply set that equal that uh, set it equal to u array one else it's going to be set equal to an empty string. Okay? And then we're going to check permission because we only want to build these items out uh, in the array if they have permission. So if self has access controller name action name. So we're using that function we already created. And then we're going to return uh, our project root with our val on the end of it, okay? Otherwise, um, if they don't have uh, access to this, then what we're going to do is we're just going to return false, okay? So that gets the link. It will return the link if it's an external link. It will return the link if it um, if they have access to it. Otherwise, it's not going to return it. What that's going to do is allow us to have items in our menu that are not, um, that don't show up if they don't have access to see them, basically. Okay. All right, so now that we have the, that, we have our menu, what we can do is, let's see, in our main menu here, let's just um, dump and die our menu so we can see what the, the happened there. Uh, refresh. Got a problem. Five here. Oh, I missed a semicolon or tear. Continue. All right, so let's look at this. This is our menu now. We have home and home. This will be our link to home. Uh, we have tools, and then that um, my tools will be here. So tools is a, an array, so there'll be a, 
these are the elements here and then we can see we have separator down here and then our external links were just returned like this and then we had our log out which just returns that now you notice I'm, I'm logged in now so I don't see that login link even though it was in the menu uh, .acl it's not in this array because we checked if it had if we had access to it and since we do not because of our ACL then uh, it didn't even show up in that menu so now this is really cool because what we can do is build out our menu uh, based upon this so let's get going on that